Which quarterbacks impressed at the Combine? This is from Good Morning Football over on the NFL Network. Let's get right into the video, shall we? The case for himself, J.J. McCarthy, is other things we learned about the quarterback class at the 2024 Scouting Combine, Peter. McCarthy competed, and I love that. And yeah. so did Michael Penix Jr. Those guys competed. Now, J They needed to compete. I mean, you know, there's a big difference between Caleb Williams not throwing and J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix. Like Michael Penix and J.J. McCarthy are going through the, the Combine process the way it should be. The reason the combine is there is for players that are on the fringe, whether that's on the fringe of the first round or on the fringe of the top 10 or on the fringe of the fifth overall pick, whatever it may be, if you are not solidified in your spot, the combine is a last chance for you to try and push yourself off the draft board. That's all it is. And for people like Michael Penix, Michael Penix could go in the second round, but if he has good enough workouts and interviews and pro days and whatever, he could elevate himself to that like first round, into the first round kind of world. J.J. McCarthy, is he a top 15 pick? I don't think so, personally. It sounds like he will go top 15. And these com this combine and these workouts and the pro day and things like that, that'll help the teams in that area feel better about drafting him there. If the combine wasn't there, you know, if, if pro days weren't there, if workouts weren't there, it'd be tough for a lot of these quarterbacks with it with very small amount of game tape or small amount of experience to really kind of prove that they belong. AJ's interview there was just part of the whole piece in that he interviewed really well with teams. He comes in, he is dialed in. I mean, this is like, you're talking about a pro's pro as far as saying the right things and knowing how to get on the board. I was told by one team that he got up on the board and was able to dissect things that no other quarterback that they so the good thing about McCarthy, if you are, you know, a McCarthy stan, he's a pro-ready quarterback. He comes from a pro system. So breaking down the line of scrimmage, you know, running a pro-style offense, running a system like that, a, a bit more of a mature football sense, I suppose, than some of the other college offenses, that's, a, that's good, right? It's good that he's proven he can survive in that system. He's not a... We hear it all the time, like guys who come from the old school, like air raid offenses, where it's like they never took a snap under center, you know, things like that. McCarthy, he's he's about as pro ready as a prospect can be after succeeding at such a high level under Jim Harbaugh. I met with Hood yesterday, wow. so that tells you he's got the mentals. My thought was, all right. He answered that question well, but this is going to haunt him. Against Penn State, they ran the ball 32 straight times without attempting yeah. a pass. That's like Jimmy Garoppolo in that NFC Championship game where they blow out the Packers and he only threw eight passes and we held it against Garoppolo. Like, well, he only threw eight passes. Does I, personally, I think you can answer that question really quickly. Really quickly. Because the, the, it's, not, it's not the fact that they ran it 32 times. Because if it's working, if you're dominating the game, if it's in the game plan and that's how you're going to win and Michigan's trying to win and that's the, that's the way to succeed, okay, that answer is that. The question is, why, like, why didn't they trust him? Or I guess the actual question would be, did they do it because they didn't trust him? That's what you have to answer. So if, if in these workouts you're okay with how he's throwing the ball and you feel good about his physical makeup and you feel good about his arm and you feel good about him throwing the ball – I would kind of throw that out the window. I mean, I would kind of throw that out the window unless you're watching him at these pro days and combines. You're thinking, okay, this is why. This is why. Because he's erratic or because he can't break down a defense or because he, you know, whatever the reason may be. So taking it just for what it is that they ran it 32 straight times, that does sound bad. But you kind of have to go a layer further and ask yourself, you know, what was the situation? Why did they do it? Uh, and then... With the, with this, you know, availability of McCarthy throwing, you can see for yourself. Like, do you think he can throw? Do you think he can spin the pill? Does JJ have the arm strength? All that he threw the ball pretty well. Now he missed a couple. I'm not gonna come in here and sugarcoat it and tell you he was awesome. He was fine. The part that I thought was interesting is he weighed in, and he was six two two twenty. I think going in, people thought six one two hundred, six one two oh five. So now you're talking 6'2", 220, has lost three times since high school in his entire life and can throw the ball fine and is amazing on the board and is obviously a leader and has done that with a bunch of alpha. This is like the worst way to look at the draft, I think, is whenever it's like, yeah, he threw the ball fine, kind of erratic, but man, he's 6'2", 220. Like that is the old school way of looking at these the draft. I, I just don't understand how it should be. Can you play the position? 
how do you throw the ball? What's your mental makeup? Your hand size, your if you're 220 or 210, like none none of that should matter. I mean, obviously you at a certain level it matters, but you know, it shouldn't matter anywhere near as much as his actual ability to play the position. Alphas at Michigan. It was cool to watch him. He was celebratory for everybody at the combine. If you see Worthy's 40, it's JJ McCarthy running down and celebrating with him first. Like I think he had a really, really good week. Um, does it make him a surefire top ten pick? I don't know if he did anything. No, that's I, I, say think, yes. I think he'll he go yeah. hard right now. Like 12, well, 13. We're not talking about, of course, he should be drafted and go on and hopefully have a great career. We're talking about him going to the top 10. Yeah. And I think he's going top we're 15. We're in an era of, of phenoms and freaks physically, athletically. I, I, I kind of want some of that. 32 straight times. It's not his fault. He's not calling the plays, but. I, I think I think he's in danger of there's a comp that that jumps to mind and it's it's AJ McCarron and it's a guy who's mm. a winner. Mm. I I don't know about that. I mean I, th I think McCarthy McCarthy's a freak athlete. Now McCarron McCarron was a hell of an athlete too, but he wasn't at the level of McCarthy. I think McCarthy is a little raw. He's somewhere in between like just a prospect. He's not as like, I want to say Jake Locker. That's, that's who I want to throw out there. Where it's like he's raw. He's got the physical tools, but the physical tools aren't going to blow you away. Like Jake Locker's physical tools weren't blowing you away, but there was something there. You, you thought, okay, maybe I can develop this. Now, obviously, he had way more success in college than Locker did, but I don't, I don't really – like the fact that he's lost three games since high school, I, I could care less about that. You know, So he's, he's not – he's such a weird combination because he's not undersized, 6'2", 220, but he's also not he, – he's not big. He's not like the prototypical – NFL quarterback to Josh Allen, right? So he's in between there. His arm strength, it's not bad. It's not a detriment, but it's not great. So he's in between there. Like he's in between everything. So it's strictly what you think, what you think you can develop out of him. I think he is a sneaky athlete. I think he's a much better athlete than people are giving him credit for, but he is a really mysterious player for sure. And winner and winner and is almost exactly the same size, about 6'2", 215, 220. And A.J. McCarron did not go on to win Super Bowls. He had a long career and we love him and everything, but that's not a top 10 pick. You fall in love with a guy who wins and there's this old fashioned thing about winning. But like, I, I don't really remember much of substance about Patrick Mahomes college career. I know he put up a lot of numbers. Josh Allen's college career. No one really saw it. like, yeah, Mahomes put up crazy numbers, barely one. I mean, I think he won like seven, eight games. He did put up some insane numbers, gaudy numbers, no doubt about that. Josh Allen, I mean, Wyoming, not great. I don't really care that much that you won. I really yeah, don't. I, As a quarterback, agree, agree. It's not, I don't. It's yeah. fine. I get it. I don't think it's irrelevant, but like with those guys on the board. I think it is. I think it is irrelevant. I, I really do. I don't think it really matters at all. Like, I don't think it matters. Can y'all hear that? Is that is that evil Knievel? I got a motorcycle doing the spin out things right outside my window here. I don't think it matters that a quarterback wins it really whatsoever. You know, it, it, there's just so much other stuff that goes into that, especially when you look at like where they're going to school, like Anthony Richardson, like Anthony Richardson didn't win at Florida. Max Duggan won at TCU. How do you factor that in? You don't, like, you don't factor it in at all. Board in top 10 and I'm looking at the quarterback field in the NFL yeah. right now. I'm like, man, he won. It just give me someone who's do you think really athletic. Do you think it matters how you win in college to oh, the point yeah. of like for J.J. Yeah, McCarthy or A.J. Yeah. McCarron when these guys have first round draft picks around them or for J.J. McCarthy, you're running a ball 100 yeah. times. Jamie, what was the number? 18 different players from Michigan were at the combine? Yes, it was the highest. 18, yeah. highest ever. I think that part is relevant. Or not how you win, but how the makeup of your team. Like A.J. McCarron, for example, or an Alabama quarterback. If you've got like three first-round NFL wide receivers, the best offensive line in college football, and a Heisman-winning running back, like you should be, you should be putting up some numbers. If you're just kind of a game manager with that around you, that's kind of that's kind of questionable to me because what are you going to do when you have D-level wide receivers and the worst line in, in, in football? So. If you do come from a team like Georgia or Ohio State or Alabama, it's okay that you have those tools around you, but you have to show me that you know how to utilize those tools. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't want to crucify the kid. I hate that. Yeah, He's yeah, like an yeah, awesome yeah. guy, and I really respect what he did. Top 10 pick, rare air, rare air. Definitely, and I was going to talk about Joe Milton because to me, like somebody like him, you go into combine where you're not expected to be these top guys, and you put up some of these crazy throwing numbers, how far you throw, how hard you throw it. It was so impressive, and Peter, you said it earlier, people killed you for posting his 70-yard throw because like, oh, who cares? Now, Joe Milton's a good example of the combine where it 
it's working and it's kind of like the worst way it works where everything else is whatever, but then you do some like real physical freak stuff. And then all of a sudden people are like, okay, hold on a second. Like Joe Milton, no, before the combine, no one was sitting here saying like, maybe you should take Joe Milton. You know, maybe he could possibly be your franchise guy. You know, maybe he, maybe he is a, maybe he's the next big, big thing as far as the quarterbacks in the NFL. Then you watch him throw at 70 yards. Then you hear how he's throwing oranges 100 yards uh, at, at, in college. Then you hear about how he's, you know, you take a look at, at the immeasurables or the measurables, and he's over 6'5", 235, you know, big hands, all that stuff. And all of a sudden, you start to put these pieces together, and you're thinking, well, these are some serious physical attributes. Like maybe, yes, he's raw. Yes, he, he didn't win much in college. Yes, his stats are whatever. But if he's got these physical tools and I can take a flyer on him, all of a sudden he's flying up draft boards to where I wouldn't be surprised at all if he went in the fourth round. But to me, like, that's a lot of what the combine is because we're looking at all these quarterbacks, and you talked about everybody's a surefire, surefire Hall of Famer. Nobody really criticized anybody. You said J.J. missed a few throws, but Michael Penix did great. Bo Nix did great. It seemed like every quarterback that went out there and threw the ball, we talk about how great of a passer they were how great they looked in the T-shirt and the shorts. The three guys that are going to go up the board first, probably, none of those guys even competed. So I look at this uh, and it's like, it's fun to talk about and it's fascinating for these guys. I mean, this this is something, like, this is unbelievable. He threw the ball 62 miles an hour. He threw a football 62 miles an hour. I mean, I played uh, 1A baseball, high school baseball in, in South Mississippi. If you could throw a baseball 70 miles an hour, you're probably going to be one of the starting pitchers. I mean, look, ladies and gentlemen, the school was 250 kids big, right? I know 70 is not that impressive. It is what it is, okay? Throwing a football 62 miles an hour is absolutely insane. I mean, he he could, you know, he could get by throwing a couple innings of BP with a football. 62 miles an hour. When you, now, let, let me, I, I always tell people this, you know, again, come from a small city in Mississippi. Whenever people are like, oh, yeah, I think I can go play college ball. I think I can go play college football. Like, brother, look at what look at what people are doing. Joe Milton, again, not a top 10 pick, not a first round pick, but not a second round pick. Didn't really win at Tennessee. Whatever. Kind of an afterthought as far as like quarterbacks in this draft class. He's out of here throwing the ball. He's 6'5, 240, huge for an average person, for a normal person. It's enormous. He's throwing the ball 70 yards. And then he's also throwing five innings of uh shutout baseball with a football. It's crazy. It is crazy the level of athleticism in, in in today's in in sports across the board, and this is a great example of it. I mean, this is absolutely insane. And if I was a GM, I'm not going to lie to you. If I was a GM, I would definitely be taking a hard look at this. I'd be thinking, well, if we can develop them, the these tools are nuts. So all of a sudden, he goes from undrafted to fourth, fifth round pick guys to get out there especially to me like a michael Penix jr and show what you can do he's already at the top though so i look at it and you're missing three of the guys that are yeah. the guys but then we criticize a guy like joe Mel because he threw the ball 70 yards but that's their opportunity when i'm not as high as these other guys i have to showcase something to try to get yeah, in that conversation for sure. another really yeah, I mean, what else is joe milton supposed to do like if you're joe milton and you're trying to get on a roster yeah if you got a gimmick and your gimmick is i can throw it 75 yards or your gimmick is, I would have brought an orange out there. That's like the big story is that uh, in college, he threw an orange, like I think it was 100 yards. I would have brought an orange. I would have thrown an orange, showed him. I can throw this 100 yards. I, uh, that would have been my combine. I'm throwing an orange 100 yards. I'm throwing a football 65 miles an hour. I'm throwing a slider. And then I'm throwing the ball 70 yards on a Hail Mary. I'll see you later. Draft me in the fifth round. I'll talk to you tomorrow. The polarizing name I found, at least on social media, and the reaction to his workout was Bo Nix coming mm -hmm. out of that weekend. But I don't know if it's because the guy played 61 college football yeah. games. Like, yeah. is it almost like too much of a good thing? People are getting on him <laughs> no. like, oh, yeah, these routes are fine, but just wait until he's, like, shorthanding a screen <laughs> pass. It's like, don't blame the guy for the playbook that he was operating within. And he did well. Yeah, I think I think the thing with Bo Nix is that when you play that many games, it, it's you, I, I think Bo Nix is pretty close to his ceiling. I think Bo Nix is who he is. I think the like JJ McCarthy, he's raw. You think okay, I can really develop him. He can take tons of step forward. I don't think Bo Nix can do that the same. I think Bo Nix is pretty close to who he is. And you're drafting Bo Nix to be Bo Nix. You're drafting him and saying, 
this player with these attributes, it's probably going to be pretty close to what I'm looking at. Can that fit into the system? Bo Nix is kind of the same as McCarthy, where he's good, not great. Good arm strength, not great arm strength. Good good athleticism, not great athleticism. Good size, not great size. You know, he's kind of, he teeters on that line of, of just being kind of bang average. And you always hear the comp of Drew Brees. Why? Because Drew Brees was that. Drew Brees was, well, Drew Brees was undersized, but Drew Brees, arm strength, not great, but not awful. Uh, physically, you know, right in the middle. The thing with Drew Brees was he just had the mental capacity that elevated him and he got put in a good system and his accuracy was really high. So if Bo Nix can do that, then okay, sure. But do you take that at 13 overall? Do you take Bo Nix at 14 overall just because you're quarterback needy? I don't think so. And it's also hard for someone like Bo Nix to impress at the combine. You're not going to impress people with precision accuracy. You're not going to uh, impress people at a combine with, you know, throwing eight yard out routes, hitting people in the chest. They they just watched Joe Milton throw, you know, a 91 mile per hour splitter with a with a kiwi. They're they're not they're not going to be impressed that you're, you know, that you're absolutely pinpoint on your on your curl routes. Well, at Oregon, and he did fine at, at Auburn, and the growth and the development that this 24 year old man is going to have and arrive with and experience wise from the NCAA to the NFL, I think is invaluable. He had a good day. Same with kind of same with JJ McCarthy. He made good throws. He missed some. Like th like this is a good example right here. Like this throw right here. Like if I'm if I just watched if I just watched Joe Milton throw 97 on the black. I mean just an absolute two seamer painting the corners. If I watch that and Man then I watch this throw right here. Look at this. Experience wise from so I mean this is we're talking about a four yard route like sweet. Cool, cool, Bo. Like this is what you're you're pulling out of your your bag of tricks here. You're 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 throwing a four yard dig route. And arrive Look with at this. experience wise from the NCAA. Hard to, to be the excited NFL, about that. I think is invaluable. He had a good day. Same with kind of same with JJ McCarthy. He made good throws. He missed some, but he had a really good presence about him too. And the the way people were kind of right ripping there. Bo Nix like, at times. Cool it felt out like route. You go to click cool. on that person's right profile. And it's like, yeah, oh, right, you sweet. are an I can make that fan throw. or Oregon fan, and you just maybe didn't like the fact that he lost a game or two and you didn't want it. But I thought Bo Nix handled himself well too, Peter. And he, he could be a late round or a late first Heck round guy too. Yeah, and he did the Senior Bowl, which everyone yeah. loves because as far as a competitor, I don't think late round. I think Bo Nix is a day two pick. Like mm. I think he's a. Oh no, no way, no way. I think I bet Bo Nix goes in the first round. Everything I'm hearing saying McCarthy and Bo Nix are going in the first round. I'd be stunned. I think. Look, it happens every year. Quarterbacks go. Quarterbacks are always people reach for them. They never slide. Like if you, if like Michael Penix, he'll. I would, I would bet that he ends up getting taken at the end of the first round. I would bet that versus he slides to like the bottom of the second round or the top of the third round. Same with Nixon McCarthy. I would bet that they get taken top fifteen over that they slide to the second round. The guy that goes in the second, third, or fourth round. Mm -hmm. I, it, you know, McCarthy, we go back to him. It's like Giants have the sixth pick. Mm -hmm. He's not going Daniel there. Jones has yeah. one more year to prove it, obviously. Like, that's going to be a real fork. Is that too rich? Yeah. Six overall yes. for McCarthy? I think your teams for McCarthy and Bo Nix, I think your teams are Minnesota, Denver, and Los, uh, Las Vegas. Those are the three teams. They're in that like early teen pick area. I think they're quarterback hungry enough. I think they could be the ones that take those players. Now, the thing with the Raiders, Antonio Pierce is a defensive guy. Kind of hard to imagine. He, first thing he does is take a you know, developmental quarterback. But those teams is where I think those guys could fall. And then if they don't fall there, then all of a sudden it's real interesting. There's a lot of teams that could use a quarterback that could find their way getting back into the first round. But I, I don't see any way that uh, Nixon McCarthy – fall out of the first uh, if i had if i was a bet man i would say it goes williams williams may daniels and then it goes mccarthy bo Nix, and then michael Penix finds his way into the back end of the first round I feel like i've just heard so many people over so many years say this young man this young man this young man he's a winner he's a winner i've heard it about aj mccarron and colt mccoy I they're all winners Tebow, like, Tebow. i don't yeah. like that Matt liner is the first thing to say is he's a winner i, I understand yeah the, the first thing you say shouldn't be that he won a lot of games the first that that, that everyone won won games you know like there's a ton same with awards like you know heisman winners and offensive player of the years maxwell award like all that stuff 
it is what it is. At, the, at this point, leave the trophies at home. You know, like that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your record was. It doesn't matter. You know, there, there's tons of Big 12 quarterbacks over the years that that lost two games at Missouri or whatever for three straight years. And, and you know, you look at who's the who's the quarterback for uh, Zach Klein or whatever. Was that the was it Colin Klein? Somebody look this up. This is about to be Colin Klein, if it's who I think he is, was the quarterback at Kansas State. At the time, Kansas State was like the number two overall team in the country. They were going to go to the national championship. They lost in the last game of the season to get bumped out of the BCS. This is before the playoffs. I'm pretty sure his name was Colin Klein. And he's a great example of like, well, Colin Klein's a winner. He he lost four games at Kansas State over four years. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, let's look it up. Let's see if I'm right about this. There he is, baby. Colin Klein, school, Kansas State, third in 2012 in Heisman voting. So 2012, his senior year, he goes uh, 2,600 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, nine interceptions. He ha- he adds another 920 yards on the ground with 23 touchdowns. Oh, my God. He had 23 touchdowns on the ground. His junior year, his junior season... He had, he had 317 rushes. It's like Ricky Williams. He had 317 rushes for 1,141 yards and 27 touchdowns. Wow. That is unbelievable. That is crazy. So he goes, he throws for less than 2,000 yards, throws for six, uh, 13 touchdowns his junior year, but like I said, adds 27 touchdowns and 1,100 yards on the ground. What a player. So can so he was with Kansas State from 2009 to 2012. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can do the records. I want to see if I was right about him, like just winning all these games. I don't know if he was that good. I don't, I don't know. Okay, 2009. There were four. All right, there were. Uh, let's see. What am I looking at here? Is there an easy way to do this? College football. What are we doing here? Schedule and results. Okay, here we go. So there were whatever 2009. He's a freshman. You know. 2010, he probably just starts to play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Won seven games. Goes to the Pinstripe Bowl. Now this year, this is when he starts running all over the place. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This really is what, what counts. So he goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and three. All right, ten and three. And then his senior year. So we're just going to count his junior and senior year. This is the one I was talking about. He loses. He loses. They lose to Baylor. Look at oh look at the recollection. Look at the recollection. Can y'all see this? All right. See the two in parentheses? They are the number two. They're the number two team in the country. Right here. They lose at Baylor. First loss of the season. Lose at Baylor. Then they play. I'm guessing this is the Big 12 championship. They win that. And then they go to the Fiesta Bowl and lose to Oregon. So yeah, if they don't lose to Baylor. They're playing in the BCS National Championship his se- his senior year. What an unbelievable recollection. Okay, so they're, so he's 10 and 3 his junior year. Then he goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 and 2. So he's 21. He's 21 and 5. Yeah, so you could say Colin Clown was 21 and 5 over his over his junior and senior year. And you know what that got Colin, Colin Klein? Absolutely nothing. So, you know, that, that's a good example right there, how you, you, you can take some random quarterback, has a couple of good years, gets a couple of wins. I mean, Colin Klein was a game away from, you know, being a national championship, potentially the national championship winning quarterback for Kansas State, like lifting Kansas State up to, all right, okay, here's where the record was. That would have been easier. So, man, unreal recollection. There's a lot to like. Sixth overall. How about Atlanta? Eight. It's high, man. It's really high. No, top ten is too high. Out that yeah. high. Yeah. So the 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 overall thought is that in some order it would be Caleb one, and then May yep. and Daniel. So they'll all be gone in the top yeah. five. Yeah. And then it- top three. It, the top three is going to be three quarterbacks. Caleb will go one. Uh, some combination of Drake May and and Jaden Daniels will be two and three, and then you're going to have a drop to that like eleven, twelve, thirteen world where I think McCarthy will go. And then I wouldn't, maybe Knicks goes, like right there if someone gets desperate. But if not, Knicks may slide a little bit. Someone will take him. And then boom, someone comes back in. End of the first round, takes Michael Penix. It's this like great unknown for McCarthy. Yeah. 
Penix. Knicks. Yeah. Penix. All those guys. Mm -hmm. All those guys. And it's, you know, Daniel Jeremiah said yesterday, we could have five or six in the first round. Like, they are good. Like, mm -hmm. maybe Nick I, I sneaks said that. into the first mm -hmm. round. I said McCarthy, that. to me, might be the most fascinating because of the chicken and the egg. Yeah. Amazing winner. Amazing decorated career. As an individual, is he the one that's going to go into a new room and take a team and lift them and hoist a Lombardi? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Which quarterback impressed you in the combine? I'll see you in the next video. Peace.